a very warm greetings to one and all watching this video lecture. Myself, Nishi Pathak, Assistant Professor associated with Department of Management Studies at Rajkumar Goyal Institute of Technology, Ghaziabad. Today, I am here to take the lecture on portfolio management and finding alternatives and the revision of portfolio. So, let us begin with our lecture. Now, first and the foremost thing that we should be very much aware about is what is portfolio all about. As you can see in the picture, it is written do not put all your eggs in one basket. That is the basic concept of a portfolio. Let us move in further. Now, when we try to define a portfolio, it is simply a collection of financial investments that are held by a person at a particular point of time. Now, when we are talking about this financial investment, we could have shares, we could have preference shares, we could have different fixed deposit schemes of different companies. These could be the different avenues. Now, when we talk about portfolio, portfolio is making investment in the various financial investment avenues that we have discussed right now in comparison to making investment into a single share. When we invest in a portfolio, it gives us a better combination of risk and return. Just because of the uh, of the characteristic of diversification and the correlation that is attached to each other in between the various avenues that are existing in a portfolio. So, uh, when I am talking about correlation, I mean a negative correlation that is existing in between the various avenues that are there in our portfolio. More negatively correlated, more would be the better performance of the portfolio that we have selected for us. So, what is a portfolio? Portfolio is combining different options of financial avenues and then we are investing our amount into it in order to benefit from the diversification because our risk gets diversified right we have better chances of return from the portfolio investment in comparison to what to single share investment if we invest in a single share and it goes into losses, that means our whole of the funds are going into losses. But when we are investing in portfolio, we are taking a number of options with us. If one option gets into loss, the other is uh, having likely chances of going into profits. That would compensate the, uh, uh, the gain and the loss of each other. Right? We have basically two notions uh, that are followed while we are constructing a portfolio. We have the notion of diversification and we have the notion of negative correlation. When I am talking about the notion of diversification, I mean taking a number of financial avenues as an option that are manageable and normally 15 to 20 financial avenues are considered to be manageable. right? As soon as we invest in more than one security, what happens is our non-systematic risk reduces. As soon as the risk reduces, the chances to earn more and more of profit increase. So, that is the uh, benefit of diversification. When I come to the notion of negative correlation, correlation we have two types. We must be aware about it. We have the pos positive correlation, we have the negative correlation. When I talk about positive correlation, two options are moving in the same direction in a very layman language. When I am talking about negatively correlation, I mean they are moving in opposite direction. So, when I talk about the share market, when I am talking about portfolio, if one is increasing, the other has the chances of decreasing or if one is decreasing, the other has the chances of increasing. So, they can compensate the loss and profit 
with each other. So, that is the notion of negative correlation. So, while we are making the selection of the security, this particular point has to be kept in mind that our securities to a great extent as much as possible are negatively correlated with each other. So, let us move further. Now, I have been talking about a portfolio, right? Portfolio is a collection of securities, it is a collection of a number of financial options, avenues and so on. Now, when I am talking about portfolio that is consisting of a number of options, it is not a luck by chance, it is not uh, something that has happened as a coincidence right? or by any chance, no. It is a proper scientific logical method that is followed while we are creating a portfolio. An efficient portfolio manager will keep the things in mind like the objective, the constraints for an investor, keeping all the things in mind he is going to create the portfolio. So, it is nothing the matter of coincidence, but a thoughtful process, a scientific process that is followed by the uh, portfolio managers to create a portfolio. Right? And we have a broad seven rigorous phases of creation of this portfolio, which are interrelated with each other. We cannot say one of the phase can be uh, separated from the other. No, they are interrelated to each other. They move on step by step. Let us discuss these phases in detail. Now, first and the foremost thing that we need to focus on, the portfolio manager needs to focus on is what are the investment objectives of the investor. Every investor has different options, expectations from the market. Some invest for the safety of their amount, they need, they require safety. As mentioned in the points, we will be discussing these points itself. We have the uh, safety, right? The people want their principal amount should be safe, so they can invest in avenues that are fixed, uh, interest giving or fixed return giving avenues. Some people require regularity of income. Regularity of income may be uh, they require it after their retirement. So, they, that could be one of the option. They require regular income. Then other, uh, other uh, objective could be capital gain. That means the investor is investing for capital appreciation. It could be for tax saving. I am investing in uh, financial avenues that would help in reducing my tax that I am paying. So, that could be the tax saving avenues. Then liquidity, what are my liquidity requirements? That means, what are the time horizon associated with my investment? I require liquidity in short term, so I will have to look for the avenues in that ways. If I have a long term approach, I do not require liquidity right now, I can invest in shares because they are going to be fruitful, they are in the form of returns in long term only. Then it could be speculation, I want to make short term gains, then hedging, I would like to, uh, 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 I would like to ensure my risk by using the hedging products like it could be the call option, the put option, it could be the futures, forwards and so on. Or my objective could be arbitrage. I would like to buy securities from a market at a lower price and sell it into the market that has a higher price. So, any of these could be my objective. Now, any investor who has these objectives, it is not that the options, the objectives are fixed for any investor. They can keep on changing from time to time according to the changes in the priorities that happen in the lives of the investors. So, this, this is the first thing that we need to focus upon is the investment objectives. Now, next is the constraints. We have seen what are the uh, investment objectives of the investors. Now, the next thing that we need to know is what are the constraints, what could act as the barriers while investment options are, investment decision are taking place the liquidity requirements, the short term liquidity requirement, medium term or long term liquidity uh, 
requirement tax savings every avenue is not necessary going to provide you tax saving schemes right so if you want tax saving in that case you have a number of options only in which you can invest what is your time horizon you want to have it for short term long term because every financial avenue cannot give uh, um, uh, the returns in fixed time horizon some can give you benefit in short term some medium term like when we talk about shares if you invest for a long term obviously they are going to give you there are chances of getting much good returns then there could be unique preferences and circumstances in the individual's life as an investor right so we need to keep in consideration those uh, unique preferences and circumstances pertaining to that particular investor then when we have seen what are the objectives what are the constraints for an investor now the next thing we are going to see what is going to be the asset mix decision asset mix decision over here i mean that what would be the proportion in which we are going to divide our funds in equity shares and debentures and other revenues in a portfolio what would be the different ratios in which we are going to combine the different avenues of equity shares suppose i am ready to take risk i can then invest more and more in shares but if i am a risk averse uh, investor in that case obviously i'm not going to invest much in shares i'm going to invest much in the fixed income investment options like it could be debentures it could be bonds then when we have decided upon the proportion next we need to fix our portfolio strategy now this portfolio strategy we could have the active one we could have the passive one when i'm talking about active portfolio strategy the portfolio manager under active portfolio strategy keeps on riding whatever is happening in the market that means he keeps on changing according to the market turns as and when market is changing he tries to change his portfolio right there could be different uh, options in this it could be riding the market swings whatever is happening in the market he is changing himself according to it he could switch sectors he could uh, maybe he has been much interested in the pharma sector now he wants to uh, invest some of his amount in fmcg also that could be switching sectors one that would be giving more and more of returns then another important feature about active portfolio strategy is that they combine the fundamental and technical analysis and then they make their decisions if fundamental and technical analysis give the same direction a nod is for buy the security but if fundamental and technical analysis the analysis are moving in the opposite direction it says wait wait what the watch the market and then take your decision that is the active portfolio strategy now when we talk about the passive portfolio strategy passive portfolio strategy is we buy in the form of the portfolio different avenues in the portfolio and then we try to hold it we try to hold it for a time horizon that is mentioned in the portfolio strategy the time it is not going to change as the mark as and when the market is changing okay so we have uh, decided upon which strategy are we going to follow whether we are going to have the active one or the passive one the next thing that we need to do is the selection of securities selection of securities basically depends upon three things it is the fundamental analysis the technical analysis and the random selection based on these three aspects the securities are selected now when we have decided the strategy and we have selected the securities the time comes to execute our decision now the time comes to take an action for the decisions that we have made under the active strategy and the selection of securities so basically portfolio execution it means buying and selling of the securities that we have decided under the selection of the securities when we have purchased the securities or maybe we have sold the securities 
what we need to do is we need to review the performance of the portfolio time to time that is realignment of portfolio we are going to review the performance and if we find that yes there are certain uh, improvements that are needed in our portfolio we are going to review it and we are going to make necessary changes now these necessary changes could be purchasing certain securities or it could even be uh, selling of certain existing securities we can purchase new securities we can even sell the existing securities now we have three types of options that we can have in realignment of portfolio first is buy and hold that means once we have purchased it we'll sit back and look to the performance for a time horizon that we have already decided and then only we'll be making any changes otherwise in between we are not going to make any of the changes then we have constant ratio plan the constant ratio plan means the ratio the proportion that exists between the equity and debentures you are going to maintain that we are not in any uh, anyhow we are not going to make any changes if we are investing 60% in equity and 40% in debentures we are going to maintain this particular ratio this particular proportion for a particular time horizon that has already been decided under the portfolio strategy then we have constant portfolio proportion insurance plan when i'm talking about this plan this is the most active plan and used plan and this is the plan that would give uh, that has chances of giving a high return and controlling the risk controlling the risk means uh, minimizing the risk and then uh, we measure the performance of the portfolio what is uh, we uh, basically follow three steps into it we are going to estimate uh, the multiplier we are going to know the floor what is a floor floor is uh, basically the uh, amount the true value that is expected by the investor when the uh, market is actually showing certain downfalls right and the third thing that we need to do in, uh, with that we need to know in this is your corpus corpus is the market value of the amount that you have invested the um, uh, in the invested in the portfolio basically at a particular point of time so based on the basis of these three informations these three steps we are going to know what is the position of our portfolio and accordingly we are going to make changes so this was the process of portfolio management that is followed by professionals the experts in order to make a better decision that would give maximum returns to the investors and reduce the exposure to the risk so let us move on further now uh, when we we were talking about uh this uh, we, when we were talking about the portfolio realignment we were discussing about revision right now uh, it has been noticed that portfolio analysis portfolio execution are given a lot of importance right and we are not giving an equivalent importance to portfolio revision though it also holds very great importance right portfolio revision is basically what it is basically the changes that we are making in our existing portfolios it could be the entry of the new security it could be the exit of existing securities right it could be the changes in the ratios maybe we were risk averse so now we are ready to take risk so we'll invest uh, we'll uh, increase our investment in equities more in comparison to the fixed Uh, uh income securities the debentures and the bonds so on so that is basically what portfolio revision means right so portfolio uh, when we are talking about portfolio we need to remember two variables right one is the securities and the total invested amount in each security these are the two important things that we need to keep in check now the financial markets are continually changing that means there are changes there are repercussions that are happening in the financial market on daily basis we can say or maybe on a particular time interval right so if we do not 
make any changes in our portfolio, maybe we lose the chance to earn better returns or it could be that we are exposed to a higher risk. So, that is why it is very much necessary that we need to revise our portfolio on a time to time, right. So, to conclude portfolio revision, it is what portfolio revision is the changes that we are going to make in the mix of the securities that are existing in the portfolio. Now, what is the need of for revision? It could be we have additional funds now, we can invest more into the portfolio that could be one reason. There is a change in the risk tolerance, right? I told you we could be risk tolerant, we could be risk averse. I am ready to take risk now, I am uh, ready to tolerate the risk now. So, that is why we can revise our portfolio. Then investment goals, basically whatever have been our investment objectives, maybe my investment objectives was a regular income, but I think now capital appreciation would be much beneficial right now. So, maybe that could be my goal, that could be my objective. So, the shift in the objectives keeps on happening. So, we can revise the portfolio. Then another could be we need to liquidate a part of portfolio to provide funds for some other alternative use. At instant, I require some amount of money for some other use and because of that, I need to sell certain securities so that I can uh, creep into the liquidity position. I can have some cash in hand to use for that particular alternative. That could be another reason I would be revising, maybe I would be selling out certain securities in order to get that liquidity position. Now, we have certain constraints in a portfolio. It could be the transaction cost, transaction cost, the more and more transaction cost basically is the cost of brokers brokerage that we are paying, it could be commission, right. Uh, more and more we revise the transaction cost keeps on increasing, right. More and more we buy and sell the securities, it will increase the transaction cost. Then taxes, we need to pay taxes on a long, long term capital gains and short term capital gains. We need to pay lower on the long term capital gain in comparison to the short term capital gain. Now, when I talk about long term capital gain, I mean you purchase a security and keep it with yourself at least for one year and then sell off. That is a long term, the gain that you are going to have from such security after selling it after one year is your long term capital gain. Right. So, you need to pay taxes on whether it is long term or whether it is short term. Then there are certain statutory stipulations that have to be fo uh, followed by the portfolio managers that would make the portfolio revision process a bit lengthy, a time taking. Right. And then we have the intrinsic difficulty. Intrinsic difficulty by this we mean that uh, it is a time taking process one thing and secondly there is no defined methodology that needs to be followed for portfolio revision right and uh, portfolio managers follow accordingly what is convenient for them. So, that is another constraint in the form of intrinsic difficulty. Then we have portfolio revision strategies. Now, these portfolio revision strate strategies are in the form of active and passive. When I am talking about active portfolio strategy, the manager is changing his actions and is moving according to the market, right. Now, in this, what is uh, it is based on the uh, effect of fundamental factors on the economy economy, the industry, the company. It uh, the time, the skills, the resources under active revision would be in use, uh, used in a higher. So, it would increase the cost of this portfolio revision, right. And at the same time, the transaction cost would also increase we, because we would be making, uh, we would be purchasing and selling of securities again and again to make changes in the uh, portfolio. So, that would increase the transaction cost. When I am talking about uh, passive revision, passive revision is 
the strategy of buying and holding for a particular time horizon. We are not going to make any changes and if we are going to make any changes, they would be done on certain rules and regulations that have been set already. These rules and regulations are known as formula plans. Let us see what are these formula plans. So, formula plans basically are these techniques that would help us in revising a portfolio. The first and the foremost one is constant rupee value plan, the second one is constant ratio plan and the third one is variable ratio plan. I will start it from the opposite side, I will be starting it from variable ra ratio plan. Variable ratio plan means the ratio between the equity and debenture keeps on changing. First, is, uh, Firstly, when I invested it was 60 is to 40 between equity and debentures, now it becomes 50 is to 50 or later it could become 40 is to 60. When I talk about the constant ratio plan, the constant ratio plan, the ratio or the proportion between the equity and the debenture remains the same. 60 is to 40, if this is defined, it would remain 60 into uh, 60 is to 40. Now, we could make internal changes in 60 and 50 on 40. I could uh, in increase certain securities in 60 by selling certain securities, but the amount invested would remain 60. This side, it would always remain 40. It could be I have invested in 10 debentures. Now, I have increased my proportion in 5 debentures, I have sold 5 debentures, right. I have the uh, that those have been sold, right. So, the next is constant rupee value plan. In this constant rupee value plan, the investor is going to make defensive portfolio and aggressive portfolio. Aggressive would be investing in equity and the defensive will be investing in debentures and they are what they are going to do is they are going to maintain a constant plan. How they are going to make a constant plan? They would uh, suppose they invest 50,000 and 50,000 as and when 50,000 the share prices increase the amount suppose becomes 56,000. So, 6,000 this extra amount that is there because of the increase in the value of shares the shares would be sold and this 6,000 would be invested in the defensive portfolio right suppose the price of the securities fall uh, it was 50000 now it becomes 40000 so what would be done 10000 amount uh, defensive portfolio will be liquidated and it would be invested in the aggressive portfolio that is the formula plans used for the revision of uh, portfolio under passive strategy so, with this I conclude my lecture on portfolio revision and portfolio management, right. So, portfolio is basically a combination of securities that has to focus on return and on risk because when we are trying to invest in a portfolio, we are trying to diversify our risk because we are using a number of financial avenues. So, with this I conclude my lecture on portfolio management and portfolio revision. Thank you everyone for watching this video lecture. Thank you.